Hey everyone, so I'm here today with uh, somewhat of a follow-up video to the uh, Volatile M141 and M142 upgrade video. And this one uh, will cover whether or not it makes a difference to add a thermal pad to your second SSD that you've added. Um, so you can see up here that the original SSD on the lower metal uh, panel um, does have a thermal pad, which when I measured it, it seemed about 1.75 millimeters in thickness. Um, and so what I did is I went to Amazon and I just picked up some more thermal pads. These particular ones are two millimeters in thickness because it wasn't that easy to find uh, 1.75. A lot of them were like 1.5 or two. So this one came with two um, in case, you know, this is a little too thick and it uh, hurts thermal performance on the original SSD because this is a little bit thinner. Um, but we're going to take a look and see on this HP EX900 whether or not this really makes a difference. So I've already benchmarked both these SSDs in this laptop as they are right now. The original one with the thermal pad and the EX900 without. And uh, at least running Crystal Disk Mark. Um, this one starts at around uh, 31, 33C and gets up to maybe 39, 40. Um, and then the EX900 uh, without a thermal pad uh, starts off more like uh, 40C and I've seen it get as high as 62C um, during just Crystal Disk Mark. So that's pretty hot and uh, uh, Crystal uh, Disk Info sets an automatic alarm at 60C. So that actually popped up while I was running that benchmark. So we're going to go ahead and add a thermal pad to this guy and see if uh, that improves. So if I look at the indentations on uh, the original thermal pad, um, you can see that the ICs in it seem very well centered uh, height-wise here. So I'm just going to use this thermal pad as a reference uh, to place the next one. And um, interestingly enough, the OE thermal pad doesn't actually cover all of the ICs uh, on the original SSD. It covers like the controller chip and then you know this first full uh, memory chip and only like a little bit of the left edge of the second one. Um, so it may end up being a good idea to just add in one of these new thermal pads that will cover all of these. Um, but anyways, uh, to place the thermal pad on the new SSD, uh, I'm just going to measure the distance from this edge to uh, this middle uh, memory chip over here because uh, I can see its full indentation on the thermal pad here. So that'll let me know on this plate where to place the edge of the new thermal pad. So looking at my ruler here, it looks like I'm right at about 49 millimeters um, from that middle uh, memory IC going to the control chip on the HP SSD. So that's how far away on the uh, bottom metal plate I will place the edge of the new thermal pad. So I'll take my new thermal pad, I'll peel the backing off of this side, and I'll place it at 49 millimeters away. Just press that down and get it stuck to the bottom plate. Now I'll just remove the top backing film, take my ruler out of the way, and then we can go ahead and uh, pop this back onto the laptop chassis. Now that I've placed the uh, bottom panel back on, I'm going to want to go ahead and press down on it just to try and make sure that the thermal pad gets good contact with the uh, ICs. And uh, that second SSD lines up pretty darn well with this screw hole right over here. So I'm just gonna run my finger, apply pressure to get that thermal pad to make good contact. So taking a look at the indentations on this new thermal pad, we can see clearly see the controller indentation there in the corner. So it looks like uh, placement was good. Now that the bottom panel is back on, all the screws are in, let's go ahead and fire it up and uh, see if the temperatures uh, change. Okay, so I've got my laptop fired up and you can see over here that the uh, EX900's uh, idle temp is pretty darn close to the original SSD now and uh, about 8 to 9 degrees uh, Celsius cooler than it used to be. So let's see uh, how it looks when we fire up uh, Crystal disk mark and um, run it a bit.
So that was a pretty massive difference. The highest temperature I saw was 40 degrees C running Crystal Disk Mark, and that was only for a split second, versus without that thermal pad, I had seen up to 62 degrees Celsius. So just looking at max temps overall, that's already a 22C uh, reduction, and on average, um, it was at least 10 to 15 degrees. So I think uh, for a couple dollars, adding a thermal pad to your second uh, SSD, definitely worth it.